Right, welcome to today's session. Uh, very sorry, I know that some of you are writing exams and you find that sometimes our classes will disrupt your preparation for the exams that you are writing, but still, we still have to cover some of the things that we have to, to be doing. So uh, today I want to look at cash flow. I want to look at cash flow. Uh, right. Right, we'll look at statement of cash flows. Now with a statement of cash flows, it shows the cash that we have generated and the cash that we have used. The cash we have generated and the cash that the business has used during the period. Remember the financial statements, they are prepared on an accrual basis. They'll be giving you incomes and, uh, and expenses uh, regardless of when they were paid. You might find that in expense for this year paid last year will be in the financial statements. But now, uh, cash is, they take it as the blood of the business. Now, if the business does not have cash, it will not pay the employees. It will not be able to pay the suppliers. And because of that, they will not be able to get services. So it is important that we also analyze the cash. So in addition to our normal financial statements, which are prepared on an accrual basis, we also prepare the statement of cash flows, which shows how cash has been generated and how cash has been uh, used. So this statement shows how cash has been generated. That is the sources of the cash. And how it has been used. Application of the cash. Right. It is reported under three headings. We have number one, operating activities. Right, this shows the cash received or spent on normal day-to-day -day operations of the business. Right, then we have got investing activities. Amount spent on purchases of non current assets. and receipts from sale of non calendar sales. Financing activities. Which is the amounts received from capital and long-term loans and repayments of capital and long-term loans. So those are the three headings that we have to report our cash flow based on. Right. For the sake of time, I'm going to illustrate whilst also uh, answering the question, but I'll also be explaining the things so that you don't get lost. So I will, to, to help me illustrate, I'll be using a question that I sent to you. Right. 
it says the following information relates to Monaco traders. Then uh, the question says, prepare the statement of cash flows of Monaco traders for the year ended 31 December 2011. So we have to prepare uh, the statement of cash flows of Monaco traders for the year ended 31 December 2011. Right. Just a second. Right. A, our cash flow can be prepared on a direct or on an indirect basis. It can be prepared on a direct or uh, on an indirect basis. Right. So this one is the direct method. So that means if we find time, we we'll also make sure that I also show you the indirect method. So now using the direct method, right? Statement of cash flows of Monaco traders. The year ended at one December 2011. Right. Right, before we proceed, let's also read the additional information. So normally what they do when they ask you to do a cash flow, they will give you two statements of financial position, one for last year and one for this year. And they will also give you the um, statement of profit or loss for this year. Right. Let's read the additional information. All inventories are purchased and sold on credit. Uh, that means uh, not necessarily all sales or all uh, purchases will have been received. But when we are doing the cash flow, we are interested in the actual money received. Right. Cash paid to creditors was correctly calculated as 354,420. Right. It's given, but uh, I might need us to calculate it so that we can be able to know what happens then. Then during the current financial year, there were improvements effected to the buildings. All costs were paid for in cash and capitalized. Land and buildings were revalued on 30 December by Mr. Mbujo and independent phone appraiser. So we should know that on the landed buildings, they bought landed buildings and there was also revaluation. And we know that revaluation does not involve cash. A revaluation does not involve cash. It's simply a person, a qualified person coming and saying your building has increased in value. So when we are analyzing our um, cash flows from the building, we should remember that uh, the building includes non-cash item, which is the revaluation. Right. Then on 31 May, machinery was sold at carrying amount. So we should know that some machinery was sold at its carrying amount. I will explain later. Right. The loan from a partner was acquired on 31 December. Interest is charged at 12% per annum and is capitalized. The loan is repayable on 31 December 2016. So there was a loan that was taken and interest was capitalized. I will explain again. Right. So now when we do our cash flow, Right, before I answer, I will be explaining uh, each thing so that you don't get confused. Then. Right, uh, remember that we are using the direct method. It can be prepared based on the direct or uh, on the indirect method. So this one that we are doing is called the direct method. Using the direct method, you start with cash received from customers. Right. Now, to calculate your cash received from customers.
Y you. Take your. Sales. Eggs. Red receivables. Last year. We add the receivables for last year because our assumption is that they will be received this year. Then we subtract trade receivables this year. Because we are saying a, any receivables this year, that means we have not yet received the money. We have not yet received the money, so it will be uh, subtracted then. Then we subtract trade losses. return of and you should know that uh, this trade losses should exclude allowance for trade losses because remember allowance will not have been return off as yet so they should be excluded we should not include them in the allowance then so this will give us our um, cash received from customers So now let's go and check our sales, right? If you check here, the, the sales we get them from the profit or loss. Now we are not given, but we are given our cost of sales and our gross profit. And we know that sales minus cost of sales is equal to gross profit, which also follows. If you can see here, if we say sales minus cost of sales, we did that I think in our previous classes, this is equal to GP which is gross profit. If we change the subject of the formula, we can arrive at sales is equal to gross profit plus cost of sales. So as long as we know the gross profit and the cost of sales, we can calculate the sales. So we add these two. So we would say our sales here our sales are 420, 899640. It's what? 899640. Thank you. Right. Then our receivables last year, we go on our trial balance. You check the years. This is 2010. That is last year, and this is 2011. So our receivables is the data. So the data for last year, 93750, we add. And the one for this year, 94704, we subtract. So we'd say 93750 we add for last year because we know that if they are coming from last year, they will pay this year. Then the one that are receivable for this year, we subtract 94704. Right. But remember that some of these sales were not received. That's the great losses. So not, no cash was received. So we have to take them out because no cash was received. So you check on a PL if they were credit losses, but they should ex exclude the um, allowance for credit losses portion. Now, if you see our credit losses are here, 8550. But as I said, they should uh, exclude the allowance for credit losses. How do you see the allowance for credit losses? You come here and check your allowance here. If your allowance increased, like in this case, it increased from 4.5 to 5550, that means there was an amount included in credit losses which we have to take out by subtracting. But if our allowance had increased, had decreased instead, that a decrease we're going to add it. So we're doing the reverse of what we normally do in the financial statements. Because we're saying an allowance, it doesn't mean that they've been written off, they've not yet. In allowance, we're saying there is a possibility. Here, we only want to subtract the straight credit losses. So we'll take this 8550 and subtract the increase here. So we'd say, 8550, then we subtract the 
increasing the allowance, uh, which is um, five 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 zero. plus minus four five hundred what do you get Seven five seven thousand five hundred. Is what? Seven thousand five hundred. We subtract that. That means these are the actual credit losses that we return off. Right. Then you check if there is other income. Right. And we should know that to other income or other other income and expenses. And expenses. So what I'm saying here applies to all incomes and expenses. You subtract prepayments last year, if any, then add prepayments this year. The prepayments for last year, that means they were paid last year, so they didn't affect the cash flows this year. So we subtract them. But the prepayments this year, that means they were made this year, so we have to include them. Right. Then we Aid across last year. Why? Uh, because if it was an accrual last year, that means it was paid this year. So the cash flow happened in this year. Then less accruals this year. So whenever you record an expense or an income, you should check if there are accruals and prepayments. And the treatment will be as above. And this other income, we should exclude interest. Dividends. Why? Because they will be accounted for elsewhere, as we shall see soon. Right. So if we can check here, do we have other income in this question? There is rental income here of 2,400. And there is interest income. As I said, that we don't include interest at this stage. So we have 2,400. Uh, the 2,400, you have to go and check if we don't have accruals or prepayments up there. If you can check, we have got an accrual of 10,200 for this year. And remember, I said in accrual for this year, you subtract because it means part of the rental income was not received. In the cash flow statement, we are only interested in the portion which was received. So our rental income will be the 2,400. We take out that means that is the full, full income, but 10.2 has not yet been received, so we take it out. It cannot affect the cash flows. So we'd say our rental income 2400 minus 10200. We get 10200. It's money received, so we add right. Then we get our. Cash received from customer. Which is equal to nine oh one three eight six. So our cash received from customers. It's made up of the cash received from sales and other income, but the other income should not include interest and dividends. So you'd include things like um, a credit losses recovered, rental income, commission income. Those are the things that we add here. Any questions on the cash received from customers? Right, then we leave our cash paid suppliers and employees. Now, this is the cash paid for purchases and also for um, other, um, other expenses, right, other than checks, right? So that a uh, cash paid 
suppliers and employees. Right, so this includes cash paid for purchases, which were given, but I will calculate so that you know how to calculate it. A plus cash paid for expenses, excluding interest. Text. they've got somewhere where they are going to be accounted for or expenses relating to non-current assets pages and sale of non-current assets and remember we don't include non-cash items Non cash items such as a depreciation, loss on sale of assets, impairment are not included. Right, and also trade losses is not included. Remember, it's is in cash received from customers. We accounted for it up, up there, so it will not be accounted for here again. Right, so we're going to say your cost of sales. Less inventory last year, add inventory this year, Then we'll have uh, we'll have um add said payables last year. Let's set payables this year. Right, this will give us our cash paid for purchases. Then we we'll add cash paid for other expenses. Right. A, but for other expenses, let's remember these rules. We should a, adjust for prepayments and accruals. Right. So now let's let's let, let, let's see what we can do. Our cost of sales, we have it here. Four twenty-seven fifths. So say four twenty-seven fifths. Our inventory, we have it here. The inventory last day is 3480. We add the inventory this, sorry, the one for last year we subtract because it was bought last year. So it, it can't affect the purchases for this year. And the inventory this year we have to add. So it's say minus 3480. Then we add the inventory for this year, which is 5139. Then the receivables, payables, sorry. That's the creditors. 
we add the one for last day because that means it was paid this year, the cash flow happened this year. Then the ones unpaid at year end, we subtract them because we mean uh, these are purchases that have not yet been paid for. So we'd say add 109.080. Then subtract 196.320. Right, this will give us the cash paid for purchases. Three fifty four four twenty. So that's how this three fifty four four twenty was calculated. This one here. Yeah, they just gave you. So if you're in an exam and they give you like this in a test, you don't have to calculate. It's already given. But I wanted to show you in case you are not given, then you know how to calculate it. Right, then you look at other expenses. We've got distribution expenses of 226804. Right, you have to check if there are any uh, accruals or expense uh, prepayments, of which you see that up there, there's no distribution expenses. So you take it as it is. We have distribution expenses. Uh, which is 226804. Right. Then we have got, remember, eight trade closes has already been included in the cash receipts. Interest expense, we said we calculate, we record it separately. Admin and other expenses, including water and electricity, 155521. Then we have got um, here prepaid water and electricity which was prepaid last year. Remember prepayments for last year, I said we subtract. So we'll take this 155521 and then we'll subtract uh, this 15600. So we'll say administrative and other expenses. Then we'll say one five 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 two one nine as fifteen six hundred. What do we get? I'm waiting for you guys. 139929. It's what? 139921. 21. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right, then we get our cash paid to suppliers and employees.
price. So would come here and say price. When we subtract these two, we get what you call the cash generated from operations. If it was negative, it was going to be cash used in operation. Is that right? Right. Then we then include the interest received interest paid As a second. Right, then dividends received. Then we have got um A tax paid if the business is a taxpayer. Right. So those are the things that will now fall under this category. Right. We have got uh, interest income here. You check again if there's an accrual or prepayment. So we don't have any accrual. Or prepayment regarding that interest up there so we take it as it is so that means if there's no accrual or prepayment it means the interest was received so we'll have our interest received uh, which is fifteen thousand three hundred. then right. our interest paid Right. So uh, then interest paid. Right. There are two things here. We've got the interest expense. Right. Right. Is thirty seven fifty. Then uh, we know that uh, the loan from the partner was acquired on thirty one December. Interest charged at twelve percent was capitalized. Now, if interest is capitalized, 
it means it is not paid, it was added to the loan. So that interest was not paid on that loan. It was taken on 31 December 2010. Uh, where is the loan from partner? Here is the loan from partner. Uh, there was a loan from partner here of 150. So you can see that it moved from 150 to 168. All right, so we can say our interest paid, we can say the interest that is here minus the interest on that loan of 150. All right, so we can say 3750. Minus the interest, 150,000 times 12 percent. Right. So it will be 150,000 times 12 percent. Right. Uh, this was obtained on 30 December 2011. Uh, that means our year, remember that it's ending on 31 December 2021, 2011. So it was a full year's interest because it was received on the last day of last year. So for this year, it will be a full year's interest. So we're taking it out because it was capitalized, it was not paid. What do we get? Twelve thousand seven hundred and fifty. It's what I mean after after you've subtracted. Yes, twelve thousand seven fifty. Twelve thousand seven fifty. I think there's something else. I see something else here. There is also, I think I saw something that there is accrued interest. Remember, accrual for last year, we had accrual for this year, we subtract. So we have to subtract another 6.6 .6 here. Sorry about that. So minus 6.6, .6, what do we get? Six one fifty. It's what? Six one fifty. So that's negative six one fifty. Because it's a payment. Right. Then we check if there are any short term investments. Or oh, this is a partnership. All right. If it's a partnership. You also have to include drawings of cash. If they withdrew something else, you don't include. Then you also have to include um, loans to partners. It's short term. But you always assume that it's short term unless told otherwise. You always assume that it's short term unless told otherwise. There's no tax in a partnership. Is that right? Right. Uh, then we can also have uh, include purchase and sale of investments. Held for trading. As long as they are held for trading, remember that uh, we talked about that in the previous topic. Right. So if you can check here, um, there is a. Um, drawings the drawings you just take the drawings for this year which is 75 77000 drawings you just take the drawings for this year we don't have to look at the change so we have drawings 77000 yeah right then i saw that there was a loan to partner loan to partners a the loan to partner you have to check if the loans went up, it means we gave them more loans. Whatever loan we give them, it will be an outflow. 
money will be going out. And if the loans to partners go down, it means they repaid, so money came into the business. Like in this case, the loans were 74 and they are now 52. That means these partners paid, so money came in. So we're going to say, Seven four two fifty minus fifty two five hundred. What do you get? So it's money kept coming in because they repaid. Twenty-one seven fifty. Twenty-one seven fifty. Yes, two one seven fifty. Okay. Right. Then we have our net cash flow. So if they were going up, it was going to be negative. It would have meant that we gave them more loans. Right. So then net cash flow from operating activities. I think I for I forgot to write at the top that these are. That's the net cash flow. Actually, let me just we'll now put it in the second column now again. After every heading, remember we said we have three headings. When we get the overall cash flow, we transport it to the second column. So that's our net cash flow from operating activities using the direct method. So the direct or indirect, they only differ from year up to year. Everything else from the interest is the same, whether you're using the direct or indirect method. Actually on Saturday, after I finish off this statement of cash flow, I'll then show you how you could have shown it if we're using the indirect method. Any questions there? All right. Uh, so I can't start the, I think with the minutes that are remaining, I think I won't do enough on the investing and the financing activities. So on um, Saturday, we'll meet at around, uh, we should start it around, uh, uh, I will tell you either, half, let's just say around quarter to 12, around quarter to 12. I wanted, I wanted us to finish the cash flow so that you can be able to understand what we'll be doing in the assessment. So please uh, just check your messages either Saturday morning or on Friday. We are definitely going to meet uh, on, on Saturday for about one hour to one and a half hours. I want to show you the full cash flow to, to finish off the cash flow and also to show you the indirect method. So please check your messages on Friday and on Saturday. Or if I don't send on Friday, by Saturday morning, I'll send you a message, but definitely we'll have class around around quarter to 12. It will be for one hour to one and a half hours. Uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much and God bless you, Rachel. Uh, thank you. Bye. Bye.